Hello. Now that we've got GoDB Ledger downloaded and are actually running a server on our computer, we can start playing with it and seeing some of the things you can do to create financials and do double entry bookkeeping on the command line at the moment. So we've got our gRPC service running now and we're gonna just go have a look at the Ledger CLI client a little bit more. So we previously had a look at the journal command line item the other two really the interesting are the JSON journal and the file. Um, and I'll explore all three of these today. Um, we'll start off with doing the journal again, uh, just for a quick demonstration. But we do ledger CLI journal. And we just walk through our wizard. And we've got 30th of June, the last day of the Australian financial year test and we're just going to do cash and cash again for the account and we're doing hundred dollars in cents because we need an integer and we would like another line item income income and credit of hundred dollars and no I don't want any more items and now it is sent to the system so we can see that with the reporter again, we run our trial balance and we have our 10,000 units being 10,000 cents. So that's pretty straightforward. This income gets mapped directly as typed into the uh, trial balance. And the next thing we've got is a JSON journal. So I've got a Quick start here, which walks through some examples. And in there, we've got the JSON example. So we can use JSON journal and put in this example string. And if I just prettyify it for sake of explaining what's going into it, it's pretty similar to what we typed into the wizard. Uh, we've got a description, the date formatted in uh, this string. I forget what it's called. Uh, the standard for it and the account changes relates to our line items. Um, we actually state a currency in here and this will in the database explain what we are doing with the cents and how many decimal points there are. So this will be $1 and this will be $1. Uh, the signature field is not currently implemented, but down the track, I do want to be signing these transactions so we know that the user um, is actually allowed to send this information to the database. So if we do ledger CLI again, and we do our JSON journal. So I'll just type it again. Here we go. Ledger CLI, JSON journal. And we've got our JSON string quoted here in single quotes. And we send it and it does exactly the same thing. This one has actually given us, so this one actually, um, the ID of the transaction so we can find it in the database, um, in the general ledger even. So if we look at our trial balance again, uh, reporter trial balance, we can see we've got different accounts. Um, these are pulled directly in what is this string here. And we've got 100 and 100 being one US dollars of one US dollars. So that's good. And if we look at the general ledger uh, transactions, we can see all our transactions and the line items that they relate to. So we got this string back, which is the ID of the second transaction. And you can see it's turned up here with these two line items. So the reporter really gives us both for general ledger with this transactions and the trial balance with this one. So they're the two commands that are used most. The other thing that we got available to us in the ledger CLI is the file line item. 
So I am a big fan of open source accounting software. And Ledger CLI was very influential in this program. Uh, Ledger CLI works a bit differently in that it maintains a text file of your financial transactions. Um, I believe that you need a database after a certain size, so um, that's where this falls down. But it is simple and it's good to use. And you just make a file that's structured a bit like this with your debits and your credits. And I have taken the Go implementation of Ledger and implemented it into the Ledger CLI so it can read the files. Uh, I have an example file on my on my GitHub. So in the Ledger CLI source code, we've got a test folder and this just has the, uh, the Ledger CLI files. So these were pulled pretty directly off the Ledger's um, the Go Ledger test database. Uh, I've downloaded this transaction codes test file already and have saved it here. And if I just do ledger CLI file transaction codes, does the same thing. Uh, it sends the transaction to the database. And if I look at the, uh, the reporter again for the transactions, we can see that it's now got this transaction in it again. Um, you can see that it's converted in here. I had it as $4.50, it's converted it to 450 cents to put it in the database. Uh, and everything I guess at the moment needs to be in integer form via this um, command line because we don't want floating point errors in our financial database. Um, the front ends are going to be a bit more rounded, so we don't have to worry about this. We'll just abstract it away from the user. And I've done that in some of the more, uh, some of the scripts I've done, but these command line ones just do it in integer fees. Um, the next thing I have is getting out of the command line and into Python scripts we have. I have just implemented a couple easy scripts and save them onto my GitHub to communicate to GoDB Ledger. So this one here sends a transaction, same deal. We've got income and we've got cash and we're sending 1000 as an integer uh, and we've got a date as well. And if we go to my, I have saved this, I've got it out of my, Source Python bin activate go db ledger. I can run this send transaction Python script. So Python send transaction, and it looks like it has sent. If I open up this again, cd into go db ledger. we can now see this last transaction here for a thousand. Same deal, income and cash. And if we look at the trial balance, we'll see that because these two line up, they will show in the same item. So reporter trial balance. And our cash account is now the sum of this and this, which is very good. I have also got another Python script created, which does the opposite of what the reporter is doing at the moment. The reporter actually directly communicates with the SQL database. Um, in this case, it's SQLite, but it can also do it with the MySQL backend as well. But GoDB Ledger's actually implemented the trial balance as a function you can call. And if I do that, and it's called get trial balance, you can see that it gets the, uh, the trial balance and formats it a little nicer. 
So that's all good. If you're building some Python scripts and you want to talk to your financial system, it's pretty easy via the gRPC Python library. The other thing I've built is a trading simulator. So this is a mini script in Go. And all it does is it simulates a trading bot. Uh, it walks through a fixed amount of days on a random one in 10 chance, it'll buy and sell a unit of theoretical trading units. And then it will submit the transaction to GoDB Ledger. Uh, this is to put a bit more stress on it and for a, th a full year of trading simulation, I end up with about 40 transactions to send to it. So we're gonna do that now as well. And if I go into go source GitHub Darcy's into trading simulator, um, go run main. And if we look over here, we can see that lots of transactions are being sent to my ODB ledger at the moment. It might be it done. Yeah, cool. So you can see, it's printed to the screen what it's been doing. So bought some units, sold them at this price. <laughs> it looks like he made a loss as you do when you're a random trader. Um, bought some more. Yeah, these random simulations never do very well. Uh, but same deal, if we look at reporter, and we do our trial balance. We can see now it's got these extra lines for his revenue from trading. And yeah, I was saying he's a crypto trader. So he's accumulated quite a lot of uh, crypto, $70,000 worth of crypto, but he made a loss in doing so and he spent a lot more cash on that by the looks of it. Anyway, so actually no, he did it right. That's an asset. Um, so that is going to show up as a lot of transactions. Transactions. In the database now. And it's starting to grow a little bit. And we have the usual functions to delete. So our ledger CLI. Delete. And take one of these and it deletes it. So if I go, the bottom one is, what did, it, what did I delete? What was the number I deleted? Ending with SKCO and it is gone now. So this is kind of the start of GoDB Ledger. It is built to be the back end for some more complicated financial systems. Uh, you can imagine your point of sale system talking to this. You can imagine your payroll system talking to this. And then on the side, you have your accountants that are doing their journal entries. And then when we're all said and done, we do have access to our database uh, in a SQL format that we can analyze with um, normal business analytics software, such as Tableau and um, ClickSense and stuff. But there will also be software to format that into proper financials. Right now, it's all command line and it's very early stages. Uh, it's very low level. But you can see sort of the power that you have with not very much code at all because we have a system we can do debits and credits in. And I think I'll leave this stream here and discuss some of the more finer details in another in another video